Hey everybody, it's Tyler from GameStart. I'm here to teach you how to program in Python using Minecraft. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got a series of videos that we're gonna work on and put out through YouTube. Obviously you know that because you're on YouTube. The things that we're gonna focus on are fundamentals of coding. We're gonna use the language of Python. Um, there's a video that talks about some of the setup. We should have already done that. If not, check that one out. There's a few more steps that we need to cover before we can get started though. Uh, the first thing is that we need to make sure you have a text editor. So let me switch my view here just a second. Whoosh. Okay, so now you should see I have whoop, down here. This is my text editor of choice. I use Notepad++. I like Notepad++ because it is free to download and available for anyone to use. So we have probably everything we need at this point. You've got a text editor. Hopefully you've got Minecraft installed and you've got the mod installed. There's a video for all that again, so check that out in the description box as well. But other than that, the other things that you might need is some interest in Minecraft or some knowledge of, of Minecraft because it's kind of fun to have played. So if you haven't played any Minecraft, go try and play some Minecraft. And you also have to want to learn some Python um, code. You also want to learn how to code in general. So one of the first things we have to do is figure out what we want to do. So let's hop back into Minecraft for just a second and let's think about this. So here we are in Minecraft. We're ready to get started doing something. And usually the thing that I like to do in Minecraft is build. And so since this is my video, I'm gonna keep building. Um, the thing about building though, is it sometimes it can be kind of slow. So here I am just building some random blocks. I don't know what I'm making, but all I'm doing is just setting blocks. And since this is sort of one of the most basic things that you can do in Minecraft, um, at GameStart we've attached this to a Python command or a Python function as it were um, so that we can do this automatically. Um, now to do this we need to we need to know two pieces of information about uh, block creation. We need to know where it is we want to put the block and what kind of block we want to set. So you can see all the building blocks we have we have tons of building blocks to choose from and then additionally the idea of location as represented in Minecraft is done with an XYZ coordinate system. Now, you might not know that much about XYZ coordinate systems and you might not uh, care that much about them, um, but it's what we have to use to specify a particular location in Minecraft. Now, I'll quickly cover these so that you can sort of see what's going on. I'll press escape really quick so I can point to them. They'll be over here. You can see this X, Y, and Z. So you can see as I move around, I'm either moving in uh, sort of all, I'm moving all three at the same time, but each one of them represents a different uh, number line or a different axis that my character can be oriented on. So um, if I jump up and down, you can see the only number that changes is the Y number. And for those that don't know, I can fly because I'm in creative mode, and I can fly by jumping twice or double tapping the space bar. Um, and you can see as I move up and down, my, my Y value changes. So the position that I am at that my dirt man, dirt man me, is at is modified, or as it moves, Minecraft keeps track of that. So the other two, the X and the Z, they move along the sort of plane that is the ground, um, and they they do so. You can see X will move in this instance. Um, it's east and west. So if I'm if I'm headed west, and you can see sort of west here, if I'm headed west, I'm moving. I, my x value gets lower, so I'm moving in the negative x value or x coordinate. Um, if if I move along the east, you can see that gets higher. So that increases. East is the positive x direction we call it. Now you can see south. South will actually. Now this looks weird, but um, because I'm in the negative negative z, um, south is increasing. So south, as I move south, I'm moving along the positive z axis. And you can see, now I'm into the positive z values. I sort of crossed over the number line there, or crossed over from negative to positive. So you'll take a peek at that one more time as I do that. Whoosh. So right there, you can see when I'm at zero, if I move to one direction, the numbers go up. If I move to the other direction, they go up in the negative values. So negative 30. So negative 40 is less than negative 33, even though over on this side, 33 would be less than negative 40. Anyway, this is a little more uh, complicated than, than it might sound, um, but 
hopefully you you realize that those values or those numbers that I'm at represent my position. And so if I want to place a block, I can reference a particular location and say, I want that block to live somewhere. So let's go ahead and let's make a block. Let's set our first command. Let's make a block. Oh, I remember this. Let's see. Uh, how about right here? So right here in this general area is going to be about 390 in the X, 72 in the Y, and about 41 perhaps in the Z. So I'm going to hop over to my text editor. And we're going to we're going to call our first function. Now functions are something we'll talk about a whole lot over this series, but this will be the first time you're hearing about it. And essentially all it is is just a command that the computer either already knows or that we told it. So we've already told the computer what set block means. And so whenever we write a function or invoke a function, um, all we have to do is say the name that we told the computer um, that that would be, and then add any additional arguments or add a set of parentheses to say that there are no arguments. So you can see I have a set of parentheses here. They look kind of tiny, but they are parentheses. Um, and so the things that we need to tell set block, like I said, we need to say where's the cube gonna, where's the square gonna be, and where will the where will the block be, and what type is it? What kind of block? So we need a where and we need a type. So the way we do where, like I said, is with an x, y, and x, y, and z, Oop. and then the type is just the type of block. So those coordinates, like I said, we can put in. We'll just say 389 for our x value. We'll say 72 for our y value, and we'll say 41 for our z value. Now for the type, we can put any kind of block in. We have a list. So you can you can reference this list at any time. Um, we can we can open that right now. I'm gonna click on File. I'm gonna say Open, and then I'm gonna find in the Scripts folder. So you can see I, right now I'm in the MP folder. I can also um, hop over to the Scripts folder. The long way I can navigate through the C drive. I can click on MP Resources. I can click on Scripts, and then in this base folder. So in this base folder lives all the information about all the different kinds of things that we're going to um, be able to have access to. And so far, we haven't done a lot of programming yet, but uh, this introductory video is to make sure that you're comfortable or that you're knowledgeable about all the different uh, pieces that we'll have to reference. And so let's open this blocks folder. So this, or sorry, this block script has a list of all the different kinds of blocks you can use and the names that you can use for them. Um, but let's just go ahead and pick a, pick a block type that we know will stand out. So I'm going to use uh, TNT. So I'm going to set a block of TNT at this location at x of 389, a y of 72, and a z of 41. So this function that I'm calling is just telling the computer, set a block, make it out of TNT, and make it right here. So I'm going to save, save my, uh, save my code. I'll hop back in. And then to execute, to run your code, you have to press P. So I press P and I get a block of TNT out of nowhere. So I'm gonna break it, I'm gonna press P again, and it continue every time I press P, my code will run. Whoop. All right, so let's try and blow it up. Whoosh. Let's get some, so I pressed E to open my inventory. I'm gonna grab some flint and steel and I'm gonna blow this thing up. Boom, look at that. And now I can press P again, and you can see that block still places at the same location, and I can still blow it up. Boom. Huzzah. Okay, so we learned how to make set block, and we learned about some coordinate systems, and we learned about sort of finding block types, but right now I'm sure you have a billion questions. I hope you have a billion questions, because if you don't have any questions right now, you, you probably don't need this video. But the, the things that are related to what we're doing right at this moment that I want you to take away from this video. One is that there's going to be some commands that I'm going to give you throughout the series, one of them being set block. Those commands will have some number of arguments. Um, they're also called functions, but um, I sometimes I call them commands. Um, these, these functions will have some arguments that I will walk through and tell you so that you can get better at this process. Um, but it's kind of arbitrary that the coordinate system, the thing that I want you to remember about the coordinate system is that there's an x, y, and z and that they they represent the the location of things 
in Minecraft. Um, and then block type, I showed you how to sort of find that, but we're also going to walk through examples, and I'll probably give you block types most of the time. But you also, you didn't just come, come here to learn about Minecraft and Python. You sort of, on a broader scale, on more importantly, you, you're interested in how to code. And so the big lessons that I want you to take away from, for, from a coding standpoint are, one, important code might be in places you don't know about yet. So in this example, set block. There is no reason why set block makes a block other than that game start has a mod that told Minecraft to do that. Now, this is similar to other functions you might invoke in Minecraft or, or in Python, sorry. And it's similar to other other languages even, that there will be code that you will learn that that there's no reason why it, it is written the way it is other than that someone has defined it that way. And eventually, you'll be able to find the places where this information lives, and you'll be able to know without me or anyone else telling you what the arguments are and how the arguments get used. Hopefully, by the end of this series, you'll be able to do, do something similar to that related to this particular project. Now, the lessons will hopefully be, again, universal and translate. That's my goal. But at least you'll have a good framework for building on, in Python in particular. So, like I said, it's okay that you don't know where important code might be right now. But the fact that you recognize that that there's some some part of your knowledge isn't there is important. The second piece of information is that some code you write, again, is predefined. So it lives someplace else, and as a result, it's it's already predetermined particular elements of our code. So set block. This this XYZ coordinate. Why why is it XYZ? Why is it not YZX? Why why are we using uh, whole integer numbers? Why can't we we talk in the length of a carrot or something ridiculous? Um, the length of a carrot. That's that's insane insanity. What am I talking about? Doesn't matter. The key is that these arguments or this definition of set block. It's already predefined, and you can't change you can't change that. But part of this code so this my decision to use a TNT block that was not predefined that was that was a decision that I made um, as a coder as a programmer to to help with this example now the fact that I had to write TNT in all uppercase that was predefined so as as we journey through this experiment and learning about how to code the the thing that you should keep in the back of your head is what are you doing that you have to do as a result of either Python or Minecraft or Game Start, and what is it that you are choosing? And when, when you can figure out where you have the agency to choose things, you can start to, to learn a little bit more about when other coders make programs or, or scripts and what decisions that they had to make, and then that becomes super useful. So, and the last bit, like I said, the rest of the code is up to you. So once you, once you know what's predefined, you know what you can change. And if you know what, what you can change, then on top of that, you know what other people have had the ability to change. So that's a lot to take in. I'm sure you can watch this video again and take extra information from it. What I, what I really want you to walk away from, from this particular video is that this series is going to cover how to program in Python in Minecraft, because Minecraft is fun and Python is a good language that we like at GameStart. It's going to cover hopefully not only how to write code but how to read code one thing that i i don't see as much is in coding tutorials and programming lessons is the emphasis on being code literate so that's that's one thing that i want to make sure that i impart in these lessons and that, that you you walk away with but other than that we're just going to play some minecraft we're going to have some fun um run our you know run our little explosions going to make some blocks and hopefully you'll be able to pick up a little bit of code there and maybe some fundamentals about coding in general. So I look forward to the next video. I'm going to have a lot of fun making it. Hopefully you'll have some fun watching it and hopefully we'll learn something along the way. So as always, until next time, we'll see ya.